Hurricane watch, the storm surge warning, the flood watch runs all the way from Jupiter Inlet all the way down the east coast of Florida, and then it goes right back up to Bonita Beach. So it has affected such a large area, and good to see that our neighbors to West Palm Beach there are also taking this very seriously. That's right. Irma's out of bands are no match for some trees, as we saw all across South Florida. So let's check it out with Kristen De La Rosa, who has the story now from Hollywood. This is uh, 78th and 37th Street, and you know, Throughout the evening, we've seen the progression of the branches that are falling being larger and larger. And now this is a pretty large tree that's now blocking uh, this entire entire road. And you can see here, if we pan to the right, it was uprooted and it came down. Uh, and it was pretty loud based on what neighbors are telling us want to bring in uh, Miss Pineda over here, uh, who was, you were inside of the home. Yeah. Um, that was barely missed by this tree. So, so tell me what happened. You guys were watching a movie. Yeah, we were watching Avatar, just me and the girls, and all of a sudden we hear the, the, you know, the wind, and we get a tornado alert. And then my dad and our friend was outside trying to fix their generator, and all of a sudden they start screaming. We come outside and we see like the gust of wind and the rain, and then we hear the tree fall. And we're trying to close down the garage. And nothing. what did what did it sound like? It sounded like a big sound, like. Like someone knocking on the window. Yeah, like someone Wait. knocking on the window. Like, like if if Hawk came and she's trying to knock on my door, that's exactly what it sounded like. <laughs> you know, and, and and what do you make of the fact, you know, this this tree barely missed the home, and you guys actually evacuated to this home yeah. with family. Exactly, but the thing is, my car's right over there too. It missed my car by like Five feet. by like an, a hair. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So. There's and you know, we were talking about earlier. There's been so much talk about how this storm yeah, uh, we was. Yeah, didn't think it was gonna be crazy, but you know, seeing this, you everybody needs to be careful, you know, because we don't know what Mother Nature can do. She could pick up quickly and destroy everything, or keep on moving, you know. So well, everybody needs to be safe. Thanks again, and we're just glad that you're safe and that this tree uh, missed uh, missed your home. Want to take you closer, just to see uh, the strong winds. Look at this. The it was uprooted. The sidewalk is uh, clearly damaged. And then if you pan over that way, we can show everybody just how close this tree came to falling on this home, missing vehicles. So a lot of people pretty shocked with what happened. Uh, actually, look at that. Look at, look at that. Look at up there. I mean, I don't know how, how good our lighting is at this point, but it actually fell on top of another tree you could probably say that this tree saved uh, the lives of, you know, probably some of the people staying in this home and this home structure. Guys, back to you. All right. Our Kristen De La Rosa, uh, the Air Force in Hollywood. So, Quite the situation. Yeah, yeah, and you so hear about that. So, yeah, uh, of trees coming down absolutely all across South Florida. Those strong winds, those strong gusts. We really have Ross Palumbo. Ross has been traveling the area there in Fort Lauderdale Beach. He's been up and down, and you were amazed how many businesses you found, Ross, right there on Las Olas that really didn't have secured shutters. Yeah, the businesses here, they're going to have a lot of problems, Lori. Last time I came to you, remember, the winds were twice as strong as they are now. The rain was coming down, the sand being blown up. We're in a little bit of a lull, but we're actually closer now to the water, so I wanted to show you because uh, we have the light here a little closer. Look at how this is roiling at this point. You know, this is really the worst that we've seen all day long. Uh, when the mayor was out here with me, he was really pointing out, I don't know how well you can see this, but the water coming in right now, it's so dirty and full of grit that it's picking up from the, uh, from the, the, the ground on the way in, all this sand. It really shows how roiling these waves are. It's not just a clear blue wave like on a beautiful day. It really shows how out there in the distance, how choppy it is. Waves about five to ten feet here along the shoreline. But the, the good news is, is the rain for the moment has appeared to stop. And uh, the wind, though, still howling, not as much as it was in the past. I want you to see here along A1A, those businesses we were talking about, we found at least two that the shutters are loose on. They seem safe now, but you know as well as I do, when that rain's coming down sideways, it's just getting pushed in inside those businesses and probably already a bit of a mess. And we still have hours upon hours to go. I also want to show you these buildings here that you can see, most of them hotels and condos along the way. And look, this is really a good sign. Remember, we're in the mandatory evacuation area. 
and very few lights. On this one building here, I only count uh, three condos that have lights on, and those just may be on timers. But look at how dark almost all of the buildings are. That means that these people really did get out of the area. You see in the distance there, the police patrolling down A1A. They've been going back and forth. They're all over the place out here. And another good thing, Lauren Calvin, uh, we haven't seen really a single person out here since we ran into those two guys that were simply just biking, saying they couldn't uh, couldn't remember or didn't hear that there was a curfew. So the curfew is in effect. Uh, we're in a bit of a lull, but you saw just a few moments ago when I came live to you how bad it can get out here. But and that's but the Ross, situation Ross, now in Fort Lauderdale, yeah, and we're and, yeah and, yeah and and Ross, we we just want to be cr uh, cr uh, crystal clear here that many of the business owners who are watching. Uh, may see their business on television and may think, well, police are not patrolling those areas along uh, A1A okay, where you were able to lost, walk right up to those businesses. So I just seem to have lost my earpiece here for a moment, Calvin, but I okay. think what you're trying to ask is that of all these uh, business owners, they're probably worried uh, that they're getting damage. And we're not saying that we've seen any damage out here in the businesses. Absolutely not. What we're saying is that there are at least two businesses in this one block uh, that you can see the hurricane shutters have come ajar. Right there, a firefighter patrolling down A1A, just part of the uh, elaborate response we've seen out here. We really have seen a lot of rescuers combing uh, this area to make sure no one's out here, to make sure the properties are safe. And as we were talking earlier, Calvin, to make sure that there are no uh, looters. But again, we haven't seen any uh, damage to businesses. We've just seen some damage to the shutters. No telling yet uh, what kind of water may have gotten inside. Okay, and daylight will show us a whole lot more. Our Ross Palumbo on Fort Lauderdale Beach. Ross, thanks a lot for that. And just keep in mind, as you see those conditions on Fort Lauderdale Beach, the National Weather Service says the first hurricane wind, hurricane force wind gusts have already been recorded. We've mentioned that to you down in the Florida Keys. Net, they did mark one at 74 miles an hour. And remember that the center of Irma, which is supposed to go over the lower Keys, most likely Key West, yeah. 5, 6 a.m. in the morning is going to have sustained 120 mile per hour winds. So it's and, really beyond yeah anything we have seen so far. And with that said, we have been saying for most of the evening that Irma is a Category 3 storm. We also heard from the National Hurricane Center that that's going to intensify to a Category 4. And, you know, Max Mayfield likes to use the example of freight train versus being run over by an 18-wheeler. It really doesn't matter the category. The, the fact that these winds are sustained over hours and hours and hours is a lot for people like uh, Barb, who we spoke with earlier today. I mean, she says she's hunkered down, but the uh, Florida Key is not a good place to be. No, and it's going to be a very rough overnight and very rough all during the day tomorrow. So we'll get you every report we can out of Key West. Meantime, as all this, before some of this bad weather rolled into our area, Andrew Perez checked in with a church in North Miami serving its members as a shelter. So we went to go kind of get out of uh, some of the rain, some of the wind that we're experiencing right now because of Irma. We stopped at a church where we found there are several people in here taking refuge. I want you to take a walk with me. We spoke with them already and they were okay with this. This is Shalom Community Church, which is in North Miami. And you can see this is a, a chapel here on the side. You've got beds, you've got blankets, people who brought their essentials, who didn't want to go to a formal county sponsored shelter. You take a walk here. Uh, we're going to go meet the pastor. I want to introduce you to him. How are you? <laughs> I am doing wonderful. Doing wonderful. I, I tell the folks at home your name. My name is Pastor Juan M. Fuente Floreal, best known in the community as Pastor Fafa. All right. So first things first, I mean, you, you opened up the church to, to your congregants? Yes, indeed. Uh, some members of the church were asked to evacuate. Therefore, I opened up the church to receive uh, my members. And as their leader, as their pastor, I'm here uh, 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 to be there with them. What have you guys kind of been doing so far to, to pass the time as the storm? I mean, it's getting rough outside right now. Yes. Uh, by the way, we just, uh, 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 we ate a little while ago. <laughs> we have we have a cook. We have, uh, 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 we have a kitchen in the fellowship hall. We just ate. So basically, I'm not going to expose my my members to severe weather conditions so we're going to wait until uh Irma goes through to know exactly what 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 step uh, uh to take next our andrew perez there at a church uh and andrew thanks a lot for that report we want to take you back now to uh, broward county here in pembroke park 
Well, the cameras are, we have set up here uh, just outside our studios, and uh, you can see the wind still whipping up those palm trees uh, just along the Miami-Dade uh, Broward County line and uh, right along Hallandale Beach Boulevard. And uh, here's another view. Uh, well, at least the lights are on out there. Yes, um, that's a good yeah. sign. Are they hooked to our generator? We're not quite sure, but it's probably we do have the lights right there. And it, at least for the last 20 minutes or so, things have quieted down in this area right on the county line. I guess everyone's getting a bit of a reprieve. As you've seen on the radar there, it was just quieting down ever so much, and we haven't taken those kind of power surges in a few minutes here. And those bands have been intense. You know, it's not just our reporters who are feeling them uh, out in the field. I mean, we are feeling the impact of those, uh, those bands right here in Broward County and, of course, in Pembroke Park. So here's one more look at how the winds are whipping up just outside our studios there. That's the balcony just upstairs on our second floor, uh, just overlooking our parking lot. And uh, it's not slowing down anytime soon. And you can see here the forecast track uh, just off of Cuba, Irma's eye is, and heading right towards the Florida Keys, less than 100 miles southeast of Key West. And we have spoken with so many people, and I think a couple of people today told us via Skype that some 25% of the population in Key West decided to stick around, even though there were mandatory evacuation orders that went into effect. Earlier this week, we heard from the Monroe County mayor to county leaders who have really gotten the word out, trying to get people to leave the Keys before Irma arrives. But some people just did not listen. Many are, you know, they decide to make their living on a boat and uh, others who wanted to protect their property. They were so concerned and decided to stick around. And, and well, later tonight and into the uh, wee hours of the morning, uh, they will feel the fury of Hurricane Irma. But speaking of that, we have some incredible rescue men, these para rescue men from the Air Force who had just flown in. We're going to bring you some of their pictures shortly. It's just incredible that they have arrived with rescue gear down into the Keys. They have arrived at the Coast Guard station on an HC-130 aircraft. They are coming in from Anchorage just to respond alongside federal, state, and local first responders to rescue anyone in distress from Hurricane Irma as it passes through the Lower Keys. So that is an incredible effort. We'll bring you more of their pictures because as you see on this image, it is only 95 miles southeast of Key West right now, expected to grow from a Category 3 to a Category 4 over these warm waters between Cuba and the Keys. Yeah, and, and it's, yeah. it's not, it's not, it's, if anything, it is slowing down. And as Max explains, that is not a good thing. Yeah, slowing down, which means that it's going to spend a lot more time over the Florida Straits and, uh, and west of us as well. But also it's re-intensifying. Uh, going from a Category 3 to a Category 4 in those warm waters right uh, by uh, the Key West area. So this is obviously not a good time. And, and many of them are feeling those winds already, the wind gusts up to 60, 70 uh, miles an hour uh, in the Florida Keys uh, already being reported by the National Hurricane Center. We've had them, we've had them noted in two faraway places, both in the Keys and also all the way up north at Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport. We've had these hurricane force gusts recorded already and that is just the beginning our 11 o'clock advisory is not far off as soon as that comes in betty and max will get it right to you but this is the current image of monster hurricane irma which is still just roaring there we can only imagine what it has done to northern cuba our hats Vela will bring us a report as well coming up shortly he is gathering all the images he can but we've already seen quite a bit of destruction and, and we also saw the winds uh, whipping up one of the correspondents too uh, patrick Oppen. Uh, just yesterday and about how uh, he was in one of the small towns uh, where uh, the eye of Hurricane Irma came very close to, I think about 20 miles south of where they were, and uh, just a tough area to be, but uh, he was not hurt, but you saw how strong those winds were, so you can only imagine what's in store for the Florida Keys uh, later on this uh, this this evening and uh, also into the wee hours of the morning. And if you look at the very top of your screen, look at all that red. It goes all the way up toward Palm Beach County. We have a live picture out of there right now of some of the cranes in Palm Beach just spinning around. They certainly have their share of construction, just like we do in downtown Miami especially. But here are some of the cranes in Palm Beach County. It's no doubt a bit of a concern that the construction companies have tried to allow them to sway yeah. in the breeze, and that is what they're meant to do, built yeah, to do. Yeah, they're designed to do. Yeah, yeah. But what's what's interesting too is, at, at least in Brickell and in downtown Miami, uh, there were, there was simply not enough time to actually bring them down or to bring them to a secure place. You can almost make the argument here, although we don't know this for sure, but you can almost make the argument in Palm Beach as well that they simply did not have enough time because the focus was on the storm 
uh, coming to Miami-Dade County and Broward County and not so much to West Palm Beach. Well, you so. see the lightning going there. It is a yeah. light show over Palm Beach tonight as it is.